Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have an art watercolor related tip for you because I got a really great question from a viewer and she wondered what she could do about her paints that didn't activate very easily. So there's a few watercolor pigments you're probably familiar with that are very difficult to reactivate if you're like me and you like to let your paints dry into palette or dry, um, in pans and then you want to reactivate them. For me, that's much more convenient. I love having my paints all ready to go, so I tend to like to let them dry and work from them from a dry pan. But there's always been some colors that I'm thinking, you know, you might just want to leave them in the tube, and those would be cobalt violet, um, uh, cobalt green, potter's pink, viridian, uh, colors like that that are more rock mineral based and just more difficult to rewet. So I thought I would do a little bit of an experiment with some of my colors that are a little bit difficult to rewet, and um, that's what I did here. And then I'm going to show you what I recommend doing in these situations. So the first, my first uh, kind of control group was just to take a Princeton Neptune brush that is a synthetic uh, squirrel brush, and um, just kind of use a. a uh, a color that I know is difficult. So I did Cobalt Violet, I did Viridian, from those both are from Core, Potter's Pink, um, and um, oh, I think that's Mayan Blue from Renaissance. Then I did, um, actually that was accidental, I, that was, um, I think a Magenta from Daniel Smith, but I grabbed uh, the Rhodonite from Daniel Smith, and I think that might have been Mayan Blue from Daniel Smith. I'm not Mm, I'd have to look at my pans. And then I also did a um, amethyst from Daniel Smith, just with the basic, um, just a basic wet Nept Neptune brush. This is my first recording of the day, sorry if I seem a little out of sorts. And I'll also just do some Viridian from uh, Renaissance here, just like you would wet with a, with a regular brush. That's um, Viridian from Renaissance. So then the next thing I did was I sprayed it and let it wait for five minutes. So I'm just going to put another drop in there. So just by wetting the paint and leaving it for five minutes and going back in with the Princeton Neptune, which is a very soft brush, most colors perked right up. So that would be the core cobalt violet, uh, just going from dry, and this is just spraying it five minutes ahead and then lifting it up with the same soft brush. So just spraying it, you can see, made a huge difference. That's a Renaissance Potter's Pink, and there it is just letting it spray. That is the Renaissance Mayan Blue, I believe, and there it is after just letting water sit on it. Daniel Smith, Daniel Smith, Daniel Smith, Daniel Smith. I didn't do that one because I grabbed that one by mistake. So that the difference between rhodonite there and then just wetting the rhodonite, letting it sit. But still, with the amethyst or amethystonite or whatever they call it on the Permatech line, it was still very pale. So then I thought, well, I'm going to go find a cheap scrubby brush. And my husband had this bag of like 36. Uh, they're called acid brushes from Harper Freight. They're just a, um, a coarse uh, kind of disposable brush. Of course, you don't need to dispose it if you're using it um, in this fashion. And I um, I sprayed each of those colors and I scrubbed it with a brush. I didn't even wait, I just sprayed and scrubbed. And you can see, I mean, a lot of these really didn't need it, but it, if you don't want to wait five minutes, it definitely gave you that color. Whoops, these are hollow bristles, so it does, uh, hollow to brushes, so it does, it can gather water in them, so be careful. Um, but it really helped with this tricky color here, the uh, amethyst color. After scrubbing it, now I've got lots of pigment, lots of sparkle, it worked really well. So that is definitely a way that you can get your um, your colors to perk up a little bit more. So if we just compare this Viridian here, and then if I go and I scrub it with the brush a little bit here, and you can find, like, look through your stash, see if you have some, like, you know, maybe fabric brushes or plastic bristles brushes that are very coarse, um, horsehair brushes that are very coarse. They don't kill the horses for horsehair brushes, so... Um, just wanted to put that out there. Uh, just by scrubbing it for a couple seconds, you can go back in with your brush, your soft like Princeton Neptune or whatever you like to use, and look how much more pigment you get. And a little brush like this can just sit in your palette where you know you have pigments like that. Like my palette here where I have all my Daniel Smith colors, I have a bunch of uh, Primatex. I can just leave one of these brushes in there so I don't damage my nice watercolor brush like my Princeton Neptune or my Mimics. Um, or if you're using like natural sable hair brushes, those are very delicate. You don't want to damage them. So having kind of a crappy brush in there that you can use for scrubbing is great. If you've got a larger palette, you can save an old toothbrush. Just what I do is a toothbrush is past its useful life as a toothbrush. I throw it in the dishwasher and I clean it and that's, I will use that brush for cleaning. I know that grosses some people out, but I don't think there's any reason to gross, you know, you could like, you know, disinfect it. I, 
I will use that in my larger palettes to kind of scrub up. I also use it for splattering techniques and that's a great way to give a brush like this more life and also save your nicer brushes so that they will last you a long time because regardless of what kind of brush you like to use, a uh, natural hair or a synthetic that mimics natural hair, those are delicate brushes and you want, you, you pay good money for them and you want them to last, especially if it's an animal um, based brush because you know, some of those brushes, like Sables, the animal has given their life for it, so you do want to make sure that brush is taken care of and it lasts you a long time, so you're not being wasteful with them. But no matter what brush you have, you don't want to be wasteful with it. If you have like um, fabric brushes, those are very stiff, those will be great for scrubbing, you take very little effort. Like this, um, this is a Silver Art Sherpa uh, cloud brush, it's meant for pushing heavy acrylic paints around, those stiff plastic bristles are going to be great for digging up your pigment and getting it ready to go if you have any problematic pans. And some of these colors are just so beautiful, they granulate, you want to use them. It's so frustrating when you spend a lot of money on a bottle, on a tube of paint, you put it in your palette and then you go to use it and it just like won't want. All you need is a stiff brush that you can scrub at your pig pigment a little bit and I'll go from that to that. So um, if you know you have a palette where you've got a lot of those granulating earth pigments, uh, if you like the Permatech colors and they're not giving you that color payoff you want, or um, any of the, you know, your cobalts, your well, cobalts can be problematic, they cannot be, it's, you know, it depends, some are easy, some are hard, uh, but the cobalt violets, some of the cobalt greens, um, potter's pink, those color, viridian, those are all just kind of ones that are hard to reactivate, but a little cheap brush, these are like eight cents, will really get the job done and uh, make it so that you are painting quicker and you're not damaging your precious expensive brushes, because I want your supplies to last, I don't want you to have to go and buy brand new brushes all the time, keep them in good condition by using the right tool for the job. So I hope this is helpful, I thought this was a great question that was posed to me in the comments on YouTube and I thought I would do a quick little video to hopefully help you out, and and um, thanks so much for watching. Dig through your stash. You probably have some brush you hate because it's so stiff and scratchy. That is the brush you want to use to dig up those pigments so that you can make your paint more useful for you because that's my goal, to get you painting and get you creating and make you feel good about the things that you bought and put them to use. So thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like these quick tips. Until next time, happy crafting!